Hello everyone, George here, and in this video I'm actually dubbing over the previous video that I did because for some reason the timing and the syncing was horribly off. But anyway, what we're doing here in this video is we're going back to Pirate's Cove and we are going to finish off what I, well, didn't finish, which is basically texturing most of the uh, relevant elements left in Pirate's Cove. This is all part of the series and my intent to basically finish off all the visuals for the entire area. Uh, we saw that before in the checkerboard. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually using Maya's uh, text tool to create curves that will, well not curves, but polygons that'll be shown up on the screen. And I'm pretty much debating which font I actually want to use. Now in this particular case, we're just gonna write Pirate's Cove or Pirate Cove. We're gonna place that across the entire thing. Here I'm adjusting the UVs so I know what's being sampled properly. As we can see, uh, the P and the E have been inverted, so I'm gonna go ahead and reverse the normals on those elements before I go ahead and grab all of them and actually extrude them outwards. I deleted history, and then I made sure that there was nothing else connecting them, and then of course, grabbing all the different pieces, and we're gonna center them on up to the middle of our world, and then I'm going to go ahead and extrude them out. After they've been extruded, we're going to go and use a deform. Well, we're going to combine them, of course, and we're going to use some deformation tools to make sure that they wrap around everything. And I believe I use a value of 45 to make sure they work out properly. Once again, playing around with it, realizing that I'm on the wrong axis. I'm going to have to rotate that thing 45 degrees. There we go or 90 degrees, and once I've done that, then setting that curvature higher, but once again, for some reason, it won't go higher than that, so I continue to play with it until finally I get to a value of about, oh, it looks like 75 is the actual value I use. Move it back once I've actually not uh, applied the deformer anymore, so we're going to move both of them backwards and center them up on the top stage. Now once I've done this, I need to move on to the next element, which is actually giving them a color. I'm going to go with the purple color of the curtains for this, no texture necessary. So once again, grabbing all the elements, making sure I combine them together, uh, deleting all history before I do that, giving them a new material, and then giving them a material with a color equal to the purple in the curtains. And that's good enough for me at the moment, because really you can't see it in the reference material at all. You'll notice that the geometry is a little bit bogus, but it's, it's good enough for what we're doing. Next up, I look at the sign. We need to fix that sign. That sign looks horrendous. So what I'm gonna do for the sign is um, uh, take a look at some reference material. I'm gonna mess up with the UVs. I tried an automatic um, sorting of the UVs, but that obviously didn't work at all. So I just go in there and start grabbing the front, the side, the back, and the faces, and then setting the UVs up properly as you would normally expect them to be. So that's the front and the back together. Now I'm doing the sides, the top, and uh, uh, just the sides of the different elements, coming at them from the X direction, moving them off. For now, I'll be putting them back in soon. Now we're gonna do all the Y elements of the sign and moving them off as well. Rotating them so that everything's kind of in alignment with one another. I always like to scale things down a little bit. I don't like them to go right up to the edge. So that's kind of what I'm doing there. Once again, grabbing the other elements finally and pulling them out. And I'm also going to grab the back element and make sure that's separate from the rest of it because I don't want that interfering with the rest of everything else going on. Really, it's, this is pretty simple. It's just two boxes and I'm unwrapping the UV so that they all fit within the same area. And now I'm giving each one of them a little bit of space. Why am I doing that? Because when the mitt map comes around, I don't want them messing with each other. Now I grab the back element. I scale that down because really no one's ever going to see that. I scale these guys, move them around a tiny, tiny tad bit just to make some room so that I can fit that back face in just, just fine. And I scale it down even more. So there you can see most of my UVs are on the front, or I show my Texels, 
T-E-X-E-L-S are on the front of it. I push out the UV map for this and I save it on out and then we're probably going to jump into Photoshop after taking a look at the reference material. So here within Photoshop I open up the UVs and I make sure I add a stroke to the UV so it's easy to understand. I center them and then now we're going to begin adding our elements. So here I'm taking a look. It just says sorry and that's what I write. Then after that I paste it, move it down, and then say out of order. But I'm going to have the fonts be a little bit different with different sizes. So the sorry I'm going to put more of in a elegant font. Something a little bit more like, hey sorry I did this. Uh, cursive font I guess is the right way to put it, but not quite cursive. We're going to change this to be a darker color. I'm also going to give it a little bit of a stroke just to make sure that it has some kind of contrast with everything around it. Then I'm going to fill in the background color, not with black, but I messed that up, but with a color that's comparable to white, not quite white, but pretty close to it. Give it a little bit of blue to go with the purple that's in the background. Now I'm going to go on Google and I'm going to look for something, any texture that has some wood grain to it. I find a nice one here. I copy that over, paste it in and bring it on out and then I just start playing with it. Um, at first I duplicate it, move it on over and then I begin to use the different filters to actually make this whole thing work. And once again, this is one of those things where yes, sometimes you know exactly what filter works but other times you need to kind of a work with the opacity of the filter as well as the type of filter you're using before you get a really good idea of what's happening. In this case we're using a linear burn with a very low opacity to make that kind of wood grain come out as if someone whitewashed it and then painted over it very quickly. Once again naming convention is very important so I make sure I'm adhering to something like that and we can now see our sorry out of order sign along with the whole Pirate Coves theme. Now we need to apply a texture to the top and bottom elements. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to create a new 20 by 48 texture. We're going to fill it with gray. We're going to add some noise to it as well. There we are. We're going to blur that noise. And then we are going to add some motion blur to it. And then more importantly, I'm going to start looking through the different filters to figure out a good one that'll work for me. In this particular case, I really like the tiled pattern, but I thought, eh, that's probably a little bit too much. So I ended up just going with just one of the standard filters to kind of uh, add some waviness to the noise. Now the floor I want to be wood, uh, but not only do I want it to be wood, I want it to be sunken in. So I grab all those elements, I put in an edge loop, and I, do, and I uh, extrude them downwards, delete all the back faces, grab all the internal elements, and I'm separating them out from the rest of the model. The idea here is that this is a separate texture, so I want it to be separate from the rest of the model. I don't want to share the same texture space. Naming conventions always important. Let's add a new material just for the floor. Now that I have the floor done, I'm going to look for something with a lot of wood grain to it. And there I find something right there create a new texture, but that itself isn't good enough. I want there to be some grime, some grittiness around the border of it as if this thing has been there for a long time. If this thing's out of order, maybe people haven't been mopping up the stage like they should be. So what I end up doing is I actually go in here, we uh, modify the UVs and the UVs of the bottom and the top so that they actually um, are a half cylinder. It's always more difficult to work with a half cylinder than a full cylinder when you're dealing with the UVs because you got to manipulate them yourself. So grime, that's not what I meant, and we find a grime texture. I grab that, bring it into Photoshop, paste it, scale it on down, and then what I'm going to do is go to filter, and I'm going to actually make that parametric. Or excuse me, polar coordinates. So now they're wrapped around that. I'm going to spend a little bit of time heel brushing parts of it in case I use them, but mostly I'm going to overlay this on top of the other texture and give it a little bit of grime. And I'm just going to play with this for a while, adding an alpha to it and making sure that it's not too terribly uh, invasive. I just want a little bit of that grime texture towards the edges. So after quite a while of playing with different values, I finally find something I like, I save it out, 
and I'm going to move on now to applying that to the surface. And of course, you know, modifying the levels, making sure that the lights and darks are adequate for what I'm working with. Now we can go ahead and create a new material, apply it to the floor, uh, of course, naming things properly, grabbing the floor material and setting it there, coming into there, adding a new planar mapping to it, and then with that planar mapping, making sure it's the lower quadrant that I'm working with, and scaling it down ever so slightly. Once again, I don't like it when things go right to the edge. And now I've got that nice sort of darkening effect around the edges, but a, a bright highlight in the center, which is really what I'm lo looking for. And you know what, really, that's 99% of what needs to be done with Pirate's Cove. I still have to do the lights, but you know, I'm pretty happy with what I've got at the moment. I've got the sign, I've got the lights, uh, not quite done yet. I've got the, the curtains and I've got the floor. So, and the sign, really, that's very important. So in the next video, what I'm probably gonna do is jump on those lights and finish them up and then add Pirate's Cove into the final thing. Remember, if you liked it, like it. If you don't, don't. And uh, subscribe if you want more. I'll see you next time, everyone. So long, goodbye.